In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. It's a great joy, dear friends, to welcome you to St. Peter Mancroft Church here in Norwich on a Sunday morning to worship, which is something we've not been able to do for half a year. It's lovely to welcome those of you here in the church building itself, and also any who might be watching uh, the broadcast of this service, or indeed catching up with the service later on. In some mysterious way, we all gather together with God to worship him and to be with him. I won't give lots of notices. Suffice to say that on our website and in our newsletter, there's lots of information about the life of the church and things coming up in the next week and beyond. Do please enjoy having a look at those. As we reach the beginning of September, it is, of course, the start of a new academic year. And it's lovely, Laura, that you're going to be leading the prayers for us today, as you do each year as we start the academic year. And we do keep our young people, our children, in our prayers very much at this time, a challenging time for them, but a time when I'm sure they will know God's blessings in their lives. And also a moment in our church life when we welcome Ben Almond as our new Creating Space for God participant. And Ellie Hanton is going to have a year, a gap year with us as well with the music department. So we rejoice in that and keep them in our prayers also. But now we're going to begin our service with our opening hymn. I'm going to ask Barnaby to come down to the lectern. Those of us here in the church, uh, we aren't able to sing, I'm afraid. So I think we'll stay seated. If you have the words, then you can follow. But of course, we'll hear Barnaby singing as well. Thank you, Barnaby.
we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now ask forgiveness from our Heavenly Father, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. And so we hold before God the ways in which we have fallen short of his high calling on our lives, the ways in which we have put ourselves before him, the ways in which we have let down others and not loved our neighbor as ourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so with the weight of our failings lifted away gloriously from us, and glorifying God in our hearts, we're going now to draw close to God in prayer and if you're able, I'd invite you to stand for the collect. And we pause before God in prayer, recognizing his presence with us and the way in which he draws close to us as we pray to him. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself. Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you. Through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we remain standing for our gospel reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. If another member of the church sins against you, Go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loosed on earth will be loosed on heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Friends, may I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. Oh, it's been a while since I've been up here, but it's, I'm a bit afraid of heights, so I'm feeling a bit wobbly, but it is lovely to be with you once again this morning. Now, I have a question to begin with, which is, have you ever read 
the terms and conditions for something you sign up for. When on a website, when we're buying something on, online or using an app on our phone, if we're taking out insurance, there are terms and conditions for all these things. By the way, if you're watching along on YouTube, please do click the notifications button. Was that right, Michael? Yeah, good. I must admit, when I sign up for things online, I virtually never read them. Do you? Hands up if you always read the terms and conditions when you sign up for something. Mmm, yes. It's a very, very telling. For all I know, iTunes or Amazon could own part of my soul, though, thankfully, I think I've got enough insurance on the eternal life front. Now, terms and conditions are a legal way of saying, this is our relationship. They set out what the company you're buying from or being employed by expect. Do you think there are terms and conditions for Christians? Do you think there are terms and conditions to be a member of the church? Do you think that relationships matter? I think that they do, and I think there are. Because relationships matter. How we treat one another matters, and compassionate justice matters. It's all about relationship. This passage is about relationship and what it means to be a Christian and a member of the church. When we take this passage on its own, it looks pretty simple. It's all about judgment, right? What if I told you it wasn't? Like all passages in the Bible, we need to talk about them in a wider context. If we didn't, it would be like watching an episode of your favourite soap or drama and only watching one scene from that episode. You might see Barry from EastEnders shouting, but you're not, you would not know why. Maybe someone lit the wrong candle first, I don't know. You're never going to get a full impression of what's going on. Now, before this passage, we've got a number of things Jesus has said. He's talked about who's greatest in the kingdom of God. Jesus says, it's children. We should all aim to be like children. Innocent, humble. He's talked about the shepherd who leaves the sheep and searches out the one sheep who goes astray. And who can forget the line, if your hand makes you stumble, cut it off. Please don't. Don't do that. But that's just before this too. That illustration talks about the need to rigorously check ourselves and to purge our own sins away. So we've got to come at a situation with humility, with scrutiny about ourselves. And we, like Jesus, need to seek out the lost and care for the individual. Interesting stuff. So, we're not coming into this passage with a notion of judgment. This passage is all about compassionate justice and reconciliation. It all centers around conditions and there are four conditional sentences which I think are really important. If another member of the church sins against you, if you are not listened to, if the, the member refuses to listen to you and the witnesses, if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, Three of these sentences involve listening. All of them are about relationship. This isn't about convicting anyone, but about persuading the offender of their sin with the minimum of embarrassment, bringing them back, seeking them out like the lost sheep when they've gone astray. In all this, there's a sense of care for the person who has wronged you 
there are steps, terms and conditions, even when going public with the sin they have committed, there is still a sense of care and trying to get the offender to listen to reason. It's, it's fundamentally compassionate. Instead of just accusing someone of something and stoning them to death, as they would have done when this was written, the church has to have dignity and moral authority. Remember, we're talking a long time before innocent until proven guilty. You try to sort it out for the sake of the perpetrator. Even at the end, it's not about punishing someone. There's no mention of that here. But recognising the breakdown in relationship between two people. As Christians, when a member of the church sins against another, that is a breach in the body of Christ. And this breach causes pain and a relationship is broken. As Christians, we have a responsibility. Our terms and conditions are to live peaceably with one another. And when we fall out, to try and reconcile. That's not easy. But I believe it is what should set Christian communities apart. We don't just cast people aside. As Jesus said, they will know you are my disciples by your love. Notice how the one who considers themselves offended against initiates the reconciliation. The one sinned against shouldn't just sit back and wait for the perpetrator to apologize like a good Christian should, no. They must seek out the person who has wronged them and attempt to reconcile. Instead of stewing on their feelings, they first have a private discussion. Then they bring witnesses. Then they share it with the church. The reason being that we are accountable to one another in a Christian community. And if the church agrees with you, or a number of witnesses do, then there's a sense that your grievance might be valid if it's confirmed by other rather than a personal vendetta. But again, this isn't a trial. This is all about reconciling and bringing back into relationship. The line, and if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector, seems to suggest abandoning the person who does wrong, right? Well, not exactly. Firstly, it's not the sin in itself that is the issue. I mean, sin is bad. I'm, I'm not saying going around, do whatever you want to people. Far from it. What is the issue is the offender will not listen. It's the lack of humility. Refusing to acknowledge any wrongdoing is the issue. Because there is no respect, that fellowship is broken. Therefore, the community cuts ties with this person because there is no longer a sense of fellowship. But Jesus cared for Gentiles and tax collectors. And the church should do too. What this line, I believe, is actually saying is that this person who has broken relationships so badly should no longer be treated as they were, but as if they are one who needs to be evangelized, who needs us more. We still want them. We still care for them. But until their attitude changes, it is impossible for them to be in the same relationship as they were before. If the offender repents and listens, they are welcome with a loving embrace back into the fold. This kind of justice is, it's restorative because it's not seeking to punish someone punitively, but gives them time to think. 
how many of us were children. When we'd done something bad or got angry, our parents said to us, go to your room or sit on the naughty step. Often, it gave us time, time to calm down, to think about what we'd done. And sometimes, if we were in a humble rather than a defiant mood, to realize we should say sorry. It wasn't pleasant for us, but it worked. As Christians, we have a duty of care to those who've wronged us. To try and reconcile with those who've done us wrong, it's part of justice. It's also a massive challenge and is counterintuitive to everything we know. Luckily, we have a God who will never cast us aside, who has reconciled us to him through the cross. And that's really good, because if God did cast us aside when we're sinful, then I'd certainly click disagree on those terms and conditions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come now to the moment in our service when we affirm our faith in God, a God who blesses us and forgives us. If you're able to stand, would you please do so for our affirmation of faith and the simple response each time is, I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I I believe believe and and trust trust in in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I I believe believe and and trust trust in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I I believe believe and and trust trust in him. him. This is the faith of the church. This This is is our our faith. faith. We We believe believe and and trust in in one God. God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we sit or kneel for our intercessions, which Laura will lead for us today. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Let us pray now together and apart, remembering that we are all gathered in God's loving family, in worship and praise of him, wherever we are. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have today to resume morning worship here in our church building. We thank you for our ministry team, who have so faithfully led our worship from their own homes over the last six months. And we pray now for all those for whom returning to the church building is not yet possible, or who are not yet ready to make this step. Help them, Lord, to know your presence with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for our world, with all the many challenges it faces at this time, for the countries who are at the peak of the pandemic, for those who do not have access to sufficient water to enable them to maintain stringent hygiene practices, for those unable to afford or access the limited healthcare available to them, for those countries torn apart by war, famine, protest and political unrest, Help them, Lord, to know your presence with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our own country and the challenges it continues to face as we live with the effects of the pandemic, for places where restrictions have been reimposed and for the uncertainty that we all continue to face. 
Lord, we ask that you guide and sustain our politicians as they govern our daily lives and continue to make decisions about the future of our country. Help them, Lord, to know your presence with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill from our congregation at this time. For Simon, Janet, Angela, Martin and Val. And for the recently departed, Rosemary Baker and Phyllis White. Be with them, Lord, their families, carers and friends at this time. Help them, Lord, to know your presence with them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, as the autumn term begins, we remember all teachers and school leaders who have spent the summer preparing for the return of the children and young people to schools and colleges this week. We ask you to be with them as they, prepare, as they all prepare after fo following such a long period of absence. Be with all children as they prepare to return. Ease their worries and anxieties and fill them with excitement and eagerness for their return. On this, the first Sunday in September, we now pray, as has become our tradition, for all our young people from among our congregation for whom the return brings change and new adventures by name. From our church families, we pray for Nancy as she starts school for the very first time, and for any others from our Noah's Ark group who are doing the same for Jacob and Hannah as they begin the new year, knowing they will leave their school later in the year. For George as he returns to school. From our choral scholars, we pray for Catherine as she takes up a sixth form place at the Purcell School for Music. For Ilona starting a full-time writing job. For Barnaby starting sixth form and Angus entering his final year. We pray for our organ scholar, Ellie, as she begins her year here at St. Peter Mancroft as a music scholar, and for Michael as he continues on the Ministry Experience Scheme, and Ben as he joins the scheme today. Finally, we pray for our former Ministry Experience participant, Becky, as she starts at univers the University of Winchester, and our drama group coordinator, Alice, as she begins a degree at UEA. May they and all children and young people in our congregation, parish and diocese know your presence with them. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear friends, if you are receiving communion in your place today, please take now the bread that you have brought with you or being given as you arrived at church, mindful that today the consecrated ground here where we have gathered forms an extended altar and that your hands will form the place where the bread is now to be set. But I'm also placing here on the high altar uh, if you wish to come forward to the step at the top of the nave to receive the bread of communion today, bread and wine, the bread that I will be giving to you as the congregation will remain covered during the communion prayer, and then I will take all proper precautions as I give communion to you. So please do feel encouraged to come forward using the central aisle, and I will come down to the step and then return to your place around using the side aisles. And although we cannot share the chalice today, nonetheless, by it, we remember what Jesus himself did as he opened his disciples' eyes to the real presence of God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your great goodness, we have this bread and this cup to set before you now. Fruits of the earth and work of human hands, 
They will be for us the bread of life and the cup of our salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth, for by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night, he gave up himself for us all. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favor on your people and in your mercy, hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours 
now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. In a moment I shall speak the words of invitation as we receive communion today. If you are coming forward, please would you keep your mask in place until you've arrived at the front and only just slip it off as you actually consume the bread of communion. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Jesus, the love of loving hearts, the fount of life, the light of men, from the best bliss that earth imparts, we turn unfilled to thee again. Thy truth unchanged hath ever stood. Thou savest those that on thee call, to them that seek thee that good, to turn that find thee all in all. We taste the o the living bread and long to feast upon thee still. We drink of thee the fountain head and thirst our souls from thee to feel. Our restless spirits yearn for thee. Wherever change for Lord is cost, glad when thy gracious smile we see, blessed when our faith can hold thee still. O Jesus, ever with us stay. Make all our moments calm and bright. 
Chase the dark night of sin away, shed o'er the world thy holy light. The body of Christ. The body of body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. 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 body of Christ, the body of Christ, the body of Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, bless you richly this day and be with all of his gifts. Amen. The body of Christ, the body of Christ. body of Christ, the body of Christ, Let us pray. God, our creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Our service draws towards its close now. We have our final hymn, again, sung by Barnaby, our cantor today, and many thanks to you, Barnaby, for singing so beautifully for us this morning. Those of us here in the church can enjoy listening and only joining in in our hearts, not with our voices. Any watching elsewhere, of course, please do enjoy singing along. church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ our Lord. She is his new creation, by water and the word. 
from heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one all the earth, a chart of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth, one holy name she blesses, partakes one holy food, and to one hope she presses with every grace in you. toil and tribulation and tumult of our war. She waits the consummation of peace forevermore. Till with a vision glorious our longing eyes are and the grace charge victorious shall be the charge at rest. Yet she on earth hath union with God the three in one, and me seek sweet communion whose rest is one. O happy ones and holy, Lord, give us grace that we, like them the meek and lowly, on high may Dear friends, thank you for joining us for this service this morning. Today there is a prayer walk at midday, followed by a bring-your-own picnic in the North Churchyard. Also, a quiet service at half-past two here in the church, which is not broadcast on YouTube. And so we bow our heads for the final blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Christ is our peace. As we have met together in his name, so may we share his peace now and take that gift of peace with us into this coming week. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.